I think since this is your favorite, one of your favorite movies, uh, I want to use the d diva as a compliment. Yeah. Uh, so uh, do you see yourself as a diva or do you want to be a diva? And uh, what's the biggest diva you, you work with? I mean, I think diva, look, it's a very, I think it is like a very anti-woman <laughs> word. Okay. It is used so derogatory. You know, it's used in a derogatory way, but like, then there's also, yeah, that word is like hard for me because okay. I don't, I don't view Norma Desmond as a diva at all. Okay. How would you describe her? I think she's a mentally ill actress. <laughs> okay. But she's a star, right? She's like yes. larger, than, larger than life uh, character. Yeah. <laughs> I guess maybe diva is the right word. <laughs> yeah. Like. I I'm I wish there was not that negative connotation with it because it's I'm really struggling with that which is sad. Okay, but le okay, so let's change the word to a star. Okay, like that, like that you know. word's great. Okay, <laughs> so do you say do you see yourself as as a star? Of course I do. <laughs> okay, yes, I have gone through eras of my life where I don't see myself that way, and that was just sad and not me being myself and me being influenced by outside negative voices and um ex-boyfriends <laughs> and people who are jealous of you and stuff and i don't think it's bad to think of yourself as a star at mm -hmm. all i think that that is like you know a positive viewing yourself in a positive way loving yourself and being confident in who you are you can't really do this career if you're not those things and i tried i tried and sometimes i still do try like to be kind of little miss like oh i'm not that oh, i'm nothing i'm small don't look at me looking down and stuff and my my stage presence is not as good when i'm in that place and so i've had to like really lean in and and train i'm working on it now on stage in my stand up to like get up there and command attention and not be shy and and really believe in myself and Lucille Ball says like love yourself and then everything else will fall into place mm -hmm. and for some reason that recently clicked with me like yeah any issues that I've had are just because I wasn't loving myself because the truth is like at the end of the film Norma Desmond has her big moment and it's just to get arrested and like that's cool like, that's fine and so my I bring that up because it's like I can identify as a star and live in my parents basement for the rest of my life and never go outside I can still feel like a star and like be operating at the top of my creativity without an audience I believe that. So it's it's not like, oh, you to be a star, you have to have followers and you have to be on stage. Like, I don't believe that at all. I think it's really just how do you feel about yourself? Because I, in my mind, I'm like, I could spend out the rest of my days in the parents' basement working at Walgreens and like figuring, you know, making little videos and plays with my stuffed animals in the basement. Like that, that might be OK. That will be OK. Okay, so I have two, two questions. One, I mean, you just mentioned something that I heard you said multiple times. That is, if you weren't making it in the industry, you might be at home and, and Skooky, like working at a Walgreens. Yeah. And then you wrote a movie that ha yeah, I had to do with like working at Walgreens. What What's up with Walgreens? What's up with that? I think it's just that that was always my backup plan. Like when I moved to Hollywood, I was 21 and I, I mean the exact opposite of nepotism like I knew nothing about the business and so I literally thought to myself okay I'm gonna move to LA and if in one year I'm not as famous as Will Ferrell I'll move home and work at Walgreens because it was walking distance from my parents house I didn't have my own car and so that was like always the backup plan and I've always called it like my loser fantasy like that's like mm -hmm. the other version of my life um but yeah, as you know, you don't become Will Ferrell in one year. <laughs> right. And you, there never will be another Will Ferrell. And I don't know why that's who I wanted to be. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, what what is what was your first, uh, you know, how do you got your first break when you moved to L.A.? Right. You drop out of college. You didn't know anyone in the industry. Decided to be a comedian, which is like, oh, 
not an easy career and like the I guess the rate of success is not that great. Uh, how did you kept like going and how do you get your first break? I basically just did open mics. Like it's kind of boring, you know, it's the same stuff every comedian uh, has mm -hmm. shared, but like I I showed up here wanting to be an actress and quickly realized you can't just show up to Hollywood and like there's no way and so I realized the only way that I could like do things on my own I didn't have friends I couldn't do an improv team was just to by by doing stand-up and I was at a bar one night with uh my roommate at the time and I was just being really goofy making fun of my roommate and like acting all wild and then the owner of the bar came up to me and she was like you're so funny you should do stand-up and I was like I moved here yesterday to do that and I don't know where to do it. And she's like, I've heard of the comedy store. And so then the next day I went there and like brought my resume and tried to get hired. And they were like, we don't hire <laughs> girls as door as like they, they didn't want to hire me. They don't, they didn't hire comedians as waitresses. And that was the only don't job a woman could get was waitress mm. at the time. So I just kind of hung out there until But Uh, but who saw you or who, what was the first the, the thing that said, okay, I can do this? I, okay, so there's, no one ever gave me the feeling like I can do this. Like that always came from inside. I was never looking for that outside. But I do remember I, I, I was trying to get a job there. It was the first night I was there. And I, I was asking people like, how can I get a job here? And someone said, I don't some guy who just was there, you know, like probably an, an audience member was like, I think doesn't Polly Shore own this? And I was like, who's that? Because I'd never heard of him. He's like, well, he's right over there. And so I walked up to him and I was like, hi, I'm Esther. Like, how can I get a job here? And then he like grabbed my hand and was like, oh my God, you're like a little doll. And he walked me up to the talent coordinator and just like introduced me. So that was the first moment there at the store. And then I like, I remember like maybe a year into doing stand up, I had this meeting with these producers and they were like, they were like, oh, so we're really interested in you because you really have a voice. And I was like, they think I can sing? <laughs> like, I, oh my God. And then I didn't even know what that meant to have a voice. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I mean, I just moved here as the biggest idiot on the planet, which I think was probably for the best because then it left me with no way to like be calculating or make plans. I just existed. And, right. And yeah. Yeah. Do you think that you need to be a little delusional to <laughs> make it into this business? I do. Because obviously moving here in, and trying to make it is delusional. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think you can't really do that if you're not delusional. Yeah. If you have everything planned out, it's not going to work out. Yeah. And also in high school, my theater teacher he was just he said to me like if you have a plan b you'll use it yeah and that really freaked me out and i was like okay i'm not gonna do that right i was like oh that makes sense yeah cool yeah 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 that's in insane i always thought it was i was smarter than everybody else and that i was gonna move to la and immediately i was gonna make these big movies and all that because of course everybody else wasn't as smart And But, then you come here and like, oh, wait a second. No, there's, wow, this is a whole new level of people. and Yeah, but there so is many. truth to that because it's <laughs> like you are very smart and there are a lot of dumb people here. Yeah, yeah, but like I feel like that delusional thing has to be there or like if you look at it objectively, it's going to be, wait, and I don't know anyone and nobody, you know, you know, all those people who have connections that will make it like a little past you yes and it's so frustrating yes but <laughs> i've learned recently that like if you don't really have the vision and the story to tell and it's not really coming from deep inside you and if if you're like just manufacturing something fake and you don't have that true artistic spirit and that creativity it's like it's never really gonna hit and so it's better to be on the longer <laughs> journey right And like, because when I think of myself and my stand up and like over the last decade, I'm like, I hate everything I've ever said or done up until this last like 30 seconds. Like I, it's ta it takes a long time to become someone who like has something to say. I yeah. Don't know. Are you very self-critical with the stuff that you have done in the past? Like, do, can you watch your special and say, oh yeah, I'm proud of that or. 
I, that's a good question. I think I'm actually less self-critical than most people. In fact, like I remember I went to this test show for the David Spade talk show and it was me, Bobby and Andrew. And we, we all like, it didn't go great. Right. And we walked out of there and Bobby and Andrew, I've never seen two grown men like whimper, like little <laughs> babies. Like they were so upset. They're like, oh my God, we bombed. Like that was so bad. And I was like, I don't know what you guys are talking. Who cares? Like, I just didn't care. Mm -hmm. And I've like, so I try to really lean towards like, who, like, things can go bad. That's okay. And maybe that's, you know, Britney Spears' uh, influence on me when she did her 2008 VMAs performance of Gimme More and it was bad. And she said some, some performances are good and some are bad. And um, back to your question, I look back at my series alone together and I think it's awesome. I think it's like so funny and cute and honest and of that time period. And like a tr we really dug in and told our story and it has some funny jokes and, but I don't, I'm like, Oh, that was great. And I look at my stand up special and I'm like, ugh, my delivery sucked, but whatever. It's cute. You know? So I think there's some crit critical thought there, but I also try to be like, proud of it. you know nothing's nothing is perfect 